Now we can understand that in a proper way. <clears throat> and to understand that, we must understand first of all the type of the coal. <clears throat> The type of the coal which we are using in thermal power station. One is called the peat another is called the lignite, then the bituminous, then the semi anthracite, then the anthracite. So peat, lignite, Bituminous, semi anthracite, and anthracite. These are the five types of coals which we are using in thermal power plants, and peat is the Origin of the coal, coal actually. So when the coal is actually in the uh, uh, process of the formation, and the peat is the uh, uh, very uh, beginning of the coal, and the anthracite is the fully uh, it become coal. So peat, and this is going like this only. First of all, the coal becomes peat, then it becomes lignite, and bituminous, and, and semi anthracite and anthracite. And the side is the fully became coal or the uh, best type of the coal which is available. So this is also important in objective type of question that the, the best type of the coal which is available for the thermal power plant which will be increasing the efficiency would be the underside of the coal and the worst will be the peat. So in this way we can also discuss the same thing that uh, uh, as we know that the uh, uh, anthracite is fully uh, developed coal and it is in the starting phase of developing peat. So if we are using anthracite uh, in, in comparison to peat, our efficiency will be higher because the uh, per caloric value of this coal will be higher than the peat. So this will be giving more energy or more heat uh, at the time of burning when uh, when burning as well as uh, when it will be giving more heat, the more water will be uh, heated up, more steam will be generated, more uh, electricity will be generated. Whereas the peat will not be giving so much of heat and that will be actually detracting the efficiency of the total thermal power station. Another thing comes which says that since peat is in a uh, in the developing state, if we are carrying the same type of uh, coal to the same station, uh, suppose if I am carrying 1000 kg of peat, and but obviously if I am carrying the same amount of anthracite, <coughs> so anthracite and TRA and CIT, anthracite. So, but obvious one can say that the anthracite will be giving more heat, so the efficiency of the anthracite is more. So, if I say this thing that if I am carrying now, suppose, if I say that the uh, peat is having one fifth of the calorific value as the anthracite, so I can say that I have to carry 1000 kg of the anthracite to produce in that much of heat which our uh, peat will be given by 5000 kgs. So one can directly understand this thing that when the transportation of the 1000 kg will be less and the transportation of the 5000 kg will be more wherever, you know, wherever you know, I am transferring this much of coal if I am able to transfer uh, 1000 kg of coal which is of anthracite type to the uh, coal handling plant at that time, I will be producing that much of electricity which a 5000 kg of the peat will be produced. This is a, just a, a, 
uh, understanding examples such that we can understand that how the transportation of the fuel changes the efficiency of the total power plant. So, coming back to the discussion that if I am carrying 1000 kg of the anthracite to the station or I am getting the 5000 kg of the peat to the station and both are actually giving the same heat. So, to take this thing, to take anthracite or to take 1000 kg of anthracite to the station would be cheaper than the carrying 5000 kg of the peat. So, one thing which is very much important in case of thermal power station is the transportation of the fuel also because 5000 kg will be uh, transported at a higher cost whereas 1000 kg will be transported at a lower cost. One more thing comes down since anthracite is uh, 1000 kg and when it is stored in the storage plant, uh, the coal storage plant, then it will be giving, uh, it will be taking actually the very less space. So, the rest of the space which, is, which my actually coal handling plant will be having can be consumed by some more uh, coal for my gestation period, uh, sorry, for my uh, the period which uh, where when my coal is uh, going higher, the price of the coal is going higher, suppose, or the shortage of the coal, or for my reserve capacity, I can have the anthracite of coal when I am using. Uh, less coal with higher capacity. If I am carrying, if I am taking this to the uh, uh, old storage plant, then what will happen? That it will be uh, taking a lot of space. Apart from that, when it is coming to the uh, coal handling plant, at that time also uh, to make this thing into full rice, then I have to use more machinery, more time it would take, and the lesser heat would it, it would be producing. So the efficiency of my total the plant will be going down in case of peat if I am using and when I am using anthracite it will be going up. So after burning also the anthracite will be producing less uh, ash in, as compared to the peat. So the ash handling plant have to work more in case of peat and in case of anthracite it will be working less. It's the same way ash storage will be working very much high in ash, ash uh, handling plant is to work uh, on a high capacity because the ash handling would be much more difficult in case of peace, uh, peat and in case of anthracite it will be low. So one can understand now the, how the transportation of the coal uh, increases or decreases of the efficiency of the total thermal power plant. <coughs> one more thing comes in this now the type of the boilers. Types of the boiler also plays a uh, very important role in the uh, efficiency of the thermal power plant. There are two types of boilers which we are normally using in thermal power plants. One is called the pipe tube boilers. Uh, pipe Fire tube boilers and other are called the water tube boilers. So we have fire tube and this is called the water tube. So the difference between fire tube and water tube is name suggests that the fire tube means the fire is in the tube and the rest of the part is surrounded by the water. In the case of water tube, water is actually in the tubes, whereas uh, it is surrounded by the fire. So, <coughs> if I consider this is my boiler, and I have this tube over here and tube over here. So, since I said that the fire is inside, fire is inside. This boiler actually, and in case of the water tube boilers, in case of the water tube boilers, I have water inside and the pipe is outside. So, water is inside this 
what are actually inside the tube and the fire is outside. So everything is surrounded by the fire. Here, as I said, that the tube is fire tube, so fire will be inside the tube actually. And everything is surrounded by the water. One can have the uh, understanding by looking at this thing that uh, red thing represents the, uh, the fire and, whether the, and the blue thing represents the water. So by just merely looking at these two type of boilers, one can say that since the fire is inside this tube, so the pressure inside the uh, tube will be very much high and they are likely to uh, explode very easily. And one more thing that since the uh, this fire tubes are of the small cross section in comparison to the water, so they cannot meet the quick demand when the thermal power station is actually asking for. So they cannot meet the quick, uh, the quick demand of the supply. Whereas when you can see that the fire is outside and water is inside, so the quantity of the water in case of uh, the water tube boilers are less. So at this time, the water gets quickly heated and it passes through the boiler. So so the uh, rotation of the water cycle in case of water tube boiler is higher, whereas in case of the fire tube boiler it is lower. So, but the fire tube boilers are compact in nature, but these are supposed to be very much big, so that the same amount of water is heated. So the pressure in this tube will be higher, and they are also dry, and they also are likely to explode. In case of the fire tube boilers, they are uh, very much uh, uh, cheap. In case, in the case of the water tube boilers, they are a little bit expensive. So this is the difference between the type of the boilers which we are using the fire tube and the water tube. So whatever is inside the tube is again over there. In the fire tube boilers, fire is in there, and in the water tube boiler, water is in there. Coming to another point which we have discussed in the hydropower plant that is called the type of the generator which we are using. The type of generator we are using in the case of hydro generator are the uh, hydropower plants. Hydro generators in case of the thermal uh, uh, power plant we are using the turbo alternators. <coughs> So we will be using, so we'll be using turbo alternator in case of thermal power plant. So uh, they have, first of all, we can say that they are of high speed. They are of high speed because of the reason that they are having two poles only. And since they are of the higher speeds, we cannot use the silent pole of the rotor, we can use only the cylindrical type of rotor. <laughs> And since the type of the rotor is cylindrical, so it is of smaller diameter. And since the diameter is small, so we can increase the axial lag. Everything is related to everything. High speed because of the two poles, so they are called high speed turbo alternators. So the speed will be higher only if it is having low number of poles. And since the speed is high, we cannot use again the silent pole of the rotor, we will be using non silent pole, which is called a uh, cylindrical type of rotor. Simply. And since the rotor is cylindrical type, the diameter would be smaller. And since it is smaller, 
So we have to increase the length of the uh, machine. So the turbo alternators are of the smaller cross section and the large exit lengths. So one should remember all these things when we are you not know, uh, understanding the turbo alternators.